Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to be talking to you today about my thesis, my research project. And I investigated do the first language skills of Chinese native students that are reinforced at home, um, do they transfer to the second language or English skills in immersion classrooms? There were several uh, pieces of background information that I looked at. The first one was, um, uh, the first one came from Al Shabal and uh, others, 2014. Krim and CG also had some research. And these pieces of research suggest that language uh, skills are transferable. There's also current research that I discovered, but it's not really from the target demographic of our primary age students. We had research from the younger year one students, and we had lots of research from university students, but very little research from the upper primary age students. And there's also lots of research that said parental involvement was a key to success for uh, academic uh, improvement in the second language. Some of the research, this eligible research, uh, was about research across orthographies, which means different kinds of writing systems. And he studied 35 Arabic students. And basically his conclusions were that the Arabic language, <coughs> Arabic chronological awareness, would help improve the English reading. Shum also had a study, and it was a longitudinal study that was with Cantonese-speaking people, a uh, children from Hong Kong, but again, it wasn't from the demographic of the primary students. The results of that were that cognitive skills were transferable and that L1 success could be predictive of L2 success. Contrarily, he also discovered that L1, uh, being at risk in the L1 could also predict at-risk behaviors in the L2. There's also transfer across skills, not just across orthographies. And that research comes from Park 2013. Park investigated uh, Korean students, and he was interested in finding out if L1 um, reading could impact L2 reading and comprehension. His conclusion was that Korean reading ability more successfully aided the English reading comprehension than English knowledge, especially if if the children were less, less proficient in their English. Parental involvement uh, was investigated by Susan Nelson in the Salsa study. They wanted to know if an at-home program could help migrant children with their second language development at school. So they put their children into two groups, the experimental group and the control group. The control group were not given any at-home supports or activities to do. The experimental group were given at-home activities to complete with their parents. So the results of this uh, study were that the, the homeschool intervention program was successful and that the children's literacy benefited from the at-home program. Another way that parents contribute to the children's language abilities is uh, discovered in Hammer's 2012 study. And this study was used to see what kind of factors uh, from home influenced the second language ability of the children. They looked at four factors. Exposure to the language, the amount of time that the family had been in the United States, the age the child started to speak English, and the language that the teachers and parents communicated to the child in the most. The results of this study uh, found that exposure for bilingual children to the language was very impactful and that educators need to consider the parent's educational background when they're considering the child's language development. Another uh, study that was involved with parents and the children's language awareness was a study by Fung in 2013. He was interested in Chinese immigrant children and their parents and their attitudes toward learning the second language and maintaining their first language. And how maintaining the home language 
could improve the second language acquisition. And what he discovered was that home language maintenance should be viewed as a tool for second language acquisition. And that parents' attitudes uh, were positively, uh, could positively impact how the children learned their second language. All of these studies um, helped me to understand that language skills can be transferable. And it stands to reason that if they're transferable when they're young, and if they're transferable in university students, that they should be transferable in the demographic that I was interested in, which is the upper primary age children. But I didn't find any research for this age demographic, which is why I conducted my research. And I also had a secondary reason. I wanted to be able to ensure my parents that if they were monolingual Chinese parents, or had low proficiency in English, whatever support they could give their children at home would help them be able to make gains in their English language. So the purpose was to monitor the, the English uh, oral reading fluency and the students' attitudes towards learning over time. I accounted for the home language ability of the parents and the students and the parents' willingness to assist with homework and what their attitude was. The practical implication was to show that there was a positive relationship between the parents' attitudes and willingness to help their children in the home language and second language improvements at school. The research question, do L1 Chinese skills reinforced at home transfer to L2 skills in ESL immersion of the primary students? The hypothesis is that yes, a student's L1 skills, which are reinforced at home by their parents, will transfer to L2 skills, specifically that L1 home skills will help the L2 oral reading fluency improve over time. There were two variables in my study. The independent variable was the home language. It's a categorical variable because it's not really a measurable type of thing. The independent variable, uh, the dependent variable rather, sorry, was the L2 academic improvement. And it's a quantitative variable because I can measure the improvement over time. There's a relationship between the parental help at home and the student's reading fluency. My participants were 32 grade three through six students at a local international school in Beijing, China. 46.88% of the participants were female, and 53.13% of the participants were male. The school didn't offer any supplemental support. Uh, all of the children only received English in their English language classes. All of the children were 100% uh, Chinese national, which was shown by the home language uh, surveys that the parents filled out, and Mandarin was their first language which means every child who participated in the study was an ELL student. The study was designed to monitor the students' attitudes toward uh, learning and to study their uh, oral reading fluency over time. And this was done with two instruments. The first was the attitude toward learning English scale, and the second was the Dibbles test. The Dibbles test uh, and the attitude toward learning scale both were given during the regular school day. The parent portion of the survey uh, of the study was given with two surveys: the parent uh, homework survey and the home language survey. And both of these surveys were sent home to the parents so they could complete other leisure and then return to school. I also wanted to account for the children's Chinese language ability, so they were given a Chinese language exam, and that was just so I could kind of monitor where their Chinese ability was as a comparison to whether English ability was and that Chinese exam was also given during the regular day. The attitude toward learning scale was to help me understand how the children felt about learning English. It was also used to control for any overly positive or overly negative results that I may have had on the oral reading fluency test. The Dibbles test was used to measure oral reading fluency and it was scored in the standard way. 
for the formal language survey, I used this to understand what the first language was for all of the children and what was the most common language used at home. For the, uh, the parents' homework questionnaire, I wanted to understand what the parents' uh, thoughts and feelings were about homework and how much homework, uh, how much homework help they were giving their students. For the Chinese language exam, I wanted to measure the children's L1 abilities. Statistical analysis was run on all of this information, and I used the Excel uh, program to run the statistical analysis. Descriptive statistics I used means and um, standard deviation to establish a relationship between the Dimples scores and the Chinese language exam scores. And then I also ran Pearson's correlation to determine if there was a relationship, if there was a correlation between Dimples and uh, Chinese language. Inferential statistics were also used, and I used Pearson's t-test for means to compare the beginning uh, result and the ending result of the student attitude toward their English scale and the beliefs about learning English. I also used Paris Sample T-Test assuming equal variance to compare Dibbles at the beginning with Dibbles at the end to see what kind of improvement there was. The results were not what I expected. The Chinese language exam and Dibbles score showed no significant correlation at all. For the beliefs about learning English, and motivations for learning English, there was no significant change from time one to time two. All of the marks fell within the agreed range, so all the students had a very positive attitude, uh, not very positive, had a positive attitude about learning English and that didn't change. The most significant result was the Dibbles change over time. The result wasn't necessarily significant, but it was a slight decrease from the beginning to the end. So instead of showing improvement, it actually showed that they um, went down in their scores. So this is pretty contrary to the previous research that suggested skills were transferable um, from the first language to the second language. The research was designed to show progress over time, but instead it indicated a decrease rather than it was also designed to monitor the student's attitude towards learning, but it didn't show significant changes from time one to time two. I accounted for the home language and parents' ability and willingness to assist with the homework. As expected, all of the children were Chinese nationals with an L1 of Mandarin Chinese. However, the parents did not help with homework as I expected. And had they helped with the homework, it should have been supported by this research from Caesar and Nelson and Hammer and Kuhn, which says that positive parental support would help transfer the first language skills to the second language skills. I also wanted to use the Chinese language ability to have a baseline for comparing the L1 with the L2. Park's research suggests that there should be a correlation between L1 ability and L2 ability. But again, this is not seen in the research. Now, there were several limitations to the study. The small sample size being probably the biggest one. 32 students and 32 parents didn't give a lot of uh, participants to you know, complete the study. There was a lack of uh, generalizability. Having such a specific population meant that the results won't be generalized outside of upper primary students at international schools in China. I don't expect this to apply to even other ELL students. And the contrary result that doesn't support the hypothesis is a limitation. There were several threats to internal validity as well. To address the mortality, I attempted to make sure all of the students were in attendance, but that didn't always happen. The instrumentation, every instrument I used was valid and reliable from a previous study. Maturation, as far as maturation goes, I tried to use the last half of the school year to make sure that the students were accustomed to how school went and all of the exams and have their personal identities. However, some things happened at school that maybe threw them off their game, so I think maturation might have been a problem. 
To deal with attitude, I gave them the attitude survey and monitored them at the beginning and the end of the study to make sure that their attitude didn't, uh, didn't throw off the results. Regression. To handle regression, I made sure that they took each test twice, and for Dibbles, they had to read it three times. To deal with extraneous variables, I think class size played a huge role. Some classes had single-digit numbers of students, and I think that was the problem. Gender didn't seem to be an issue. Uh, outside English exposure didn't seem to be an issue either. Only five children reported having attended other international schools previous to this school. Bilingual parents didn't seem to be a problem either because the results for all of the parents were nearly the same, bilingual or not. Student attitude was controlled for by the attitude toward knowing survey. The practical implication of the survey, uh, of the study, was to show a positive relationship between parental health and student improvement. The results actually show the opposite of this. They suggest that lack of parental support may lead to a decrease in uh, students' academic ability. As educators, we need to consider this and think about everything that we can do to help our parents have a more positive and impactful relationship with their children. Because the results were contrary to previous research, further research into this age demographic is definitely needed to make sure that this age group isn't overlooked in the future. Okay, I, I thought that was really interesting. Um, if you were going to be doing the study again, what would you do differently to so you get uh, the conclusion more impactful and more uh, conclusive? I would do two things. I would make sure that the sample size was much larger than 32. And I would also try to pull from a population that was not so limited. I think having a population that was 100% Mandarin speaking native Chinese children uh, limited the type of result that I got. So would you consider expanding your, um, your sample size to countries China could possibly remain in the same demographic in different uh, international schools? But I think that's a, a possibility, but then you'd have to be careful because if you take from one country and you compare the results to a different country, you can't really necessarily compare the results because the way the regulations of this country, maybe they have to do some governmental thing that the other country doesn't have to have, so you can't necessarily ensure that children are getting the same type of education. Um, however, if it was like a British school or an American school, one school that had different branches in different countries, that might be a possibility where you could say, okay, I want to go to this type of academy who has branches all over Asia, and I want to study one from Malaysia and one from China and one from Thailand. 